the first step that we would go through as a coach is to actually analyze the sport all right, by itself. So not the athlete, just let's look at what the sport is. Hey there, welcome to our podcast. Before we jump into today's episode, could you please do us a solid? If you're enjoying what you hear, give us a five-star rating and hit that subscribe button on your platform. It really helps us reach more parents, coaches, and youth in the youth athlete development scene. All right, let's get into this week's chat. Welcome back to the In Athlete Podcast. So today we have a very special returning guest. We have Coach Nathan on. Um, so for any of the listeners out there who don't know who you are, uh, you want to tell people who you are and what you do and what you know. Yeah, so I've been with uh, In An Athlete for nearly, I think it's been three, three and a half years or so now. And then um, I've been uh, a coach here, uh, coaching a lot of our members and then I guess uh, a couple of years back, I um, stepped back a little bit and sort of started working on our education course. So we have an online course that we um, uh, teach and coach and mentor other coaches to do what we do, essentially. So we're working, those who want to work with youth athletes and want to work on athletic development, um, we, we develop the course so that others can sort of do what we do. So I've sort of been in the background managing that education side of things at In Athlete um, and then also then working full-time at uh, Richmond Institute, which is um, a, a place where they're trying to, I guess, get the next generation of sport leaders, you know, and um, I mainly look after the, the strength and conditioning side of things. So as we know, that's really important in, in sport and, and making sure that athletes are healthy, they're well, they're, um, and hopefully, you know, improving their overall performance so yeah that's sort of where i'm at at the moment awesome so you seem to know a little bit about training athletes so you want to tell people what we're going to talk about today yeah sure so i thought i'd um have a chat about uh how we how as coaches do we formulate well before we formulate a sort of a individualized program so here at in athlete we're very big on individualizing a um, program in order to fit the athlete okay we don't make we don't just have programs you know sort of written up already and you sort of just fit in there no we we learn uh, about the the athlete that comes in typically we have consults and things like that and we learn a little bit about the athlete but there's a lot of things as as coaches that we do a lot of research and a lot of our own um, background sort of um, preparations before we actually go into our computers and start formulating a, a program that, that we deliver to the athlete. So sort of wanted to go through a sort of a four-step process that we would typically do here at an athlete. And it's something that I um, teach uh, other, uh, taught about hundreds of coaches now, um, this same process. And and um, we've had really good feedback on it and, and that, you know, it, it works. And it's something that I think even um, I hope those that are sort of thinking about a strength and conditioning program whether you're a coach, you're a parent, you're a young athlete that's sort of thinking about getting into this space, even training, getting better at this sport, um, just to get a bit of an idea of what do strength and conditioning coaches do? You know, what do we do before we formulate a program? That's what I want to sort of go through uh, on this uh, conversation. Yeah, I guess for any parents and other sport coaches out there, we're not just fancy PTs. We actually do a lot of work on the behind the scenes, mm -hmm. uh, work make, making a program. Uh, but for any sort of parent or coach out there who doesn't quite know what a strength and conditioning coach does, we want to tell a bit about where we start when, we make, when we're writing a program for a child or for a youth athlete. Yeah, sure. So typically, uh, if we have that conversation, you know, we would have a, co a consult with an athlete to get to know them a little bit. But, you know, on the sort of the back end, there's, there's a few things. So let's say we've got an athlete that comes in and they play, uh, let's say, uh, AFL footy. Uh, I'm, I'm very f I'm familiar with that because I'm, I'm teaching a lot of that being at Richmond Football Club. So I might go with that example with a lot of the things that we talk about today, but feel free to jump in, Dave, with any other examples. But the first step that we would go through as a, as a coach is to actually analyse the sport all right, by itself. So not the athlete, just let's look at what the sport is okay so if let's say afl is the example um what are sort of the general movements what are the general patterns what are the general skills that are required right so if we use if we stick with that afl example there's kicking there's marking there's handballing uh there's a lot of tackling sprinting um whole whole a lot of movements that that are required in order to you know be good at the game right so and then you have to look about like what are the 
uh, you know, I might use some sort of scientific terms, but energy system development. So what are the energy systems that are using? Okay, do they need to be uh, an athlete that is really good at short sprints and or are they needing to be good at long distance running? Do they need to be able to run for long periods of time? Okay, or do they need to do a bit of everything? A bit of sprinting, they're gonna make sure that they're repeating that sprinting and those powerful efforts, tackling, jumping, change of directions. There's a lot of explosive movements, but do they need to be traveling a long distances? And we know that if I use an AFL example, like we know how big that field is, especially if you go to like an MCG, for example. Okay, they're covering a lot of space, but a lot of that is explosive movements. A lot of that is jumping, kicking, all those things that we just mentioned. So that's another thing. And the other area that we need to understand is, well, what distances do they typically uh, travel? And we know that in the next step, I'll start to talk about sort of their position. But before I sort of go into that, we've got to also understand, well, what are the, what are the rules of the game? How much time do they play now we know that footy there's different um and and we know that with majority of the sports junior sports compared to senior levels to professional levels a lot of the timing is different so you might have quarters you might have halves those halves might be 20 minutes those quarters might be 10 minutes you know there's there's a lot there that we need to consider before we sort of um you know formulate a program because um their requirements going to be a little bit different depending on the level that they play um, and the sport, of course. So there's sort of a little bit of the... we got to understand what the sport is. What do they do? What are the requirements? What's the goal of the sport? Is it getting more points? Is it, uh, is it a performance goal? Like, you know, whether it's sprinting or whether it's swimming, a lot of the swimming is who gets the fastest time, right? So these are the sort of things. we just got to understand that. And at the end of the day, like, strength... In athlete, we, we serve a lot of different athletes, a lot of different sports, and it's not uh, common that a strength conditioning coach can sort of know all the ins and outs of every single one of those sports. Like, you know, I'm pretty I'm pretty um, uh, fortunate that, you know, I was able to try a whole heap of sports growing up, you know, in PE class. I tried everything, did everything. So I have a bit of an understanding or a better understanding than maybe the average person, but um doesn't mean I know everything so I really need to dive into each of these sports and understand them before I actually start formulating a program and then the other considerations that you know I might even add to that is okay what surfaces are they playing on that might, might that might you know be something that I need to think about is it grass is it hardwood is it concrete these are some other things that we need to um, think about is it a team sport is it an individualized sport so there are a few sort of that's the first step do you have any other sort of comments what do you think of that um, yeah, just to sort of recap that kind of thing, it's just basically for S for S and C or strength conditioning coaches, it's around just physically preparing them for the demands of their sport and their position. So, if we compare, say, an AFL winger to say an, an uh, American football linesman, the AFL footballer is going to do a lot more running, a lot more passing, a lot more kicking compared to say an uh, American football linesman who just does short spurts of little high intensity efforts in their sport so mm. the way we train them is going to be completely different but with the idea that we're physically preparing them for the demands of their sport and hoping to improve the physical qualities that come with uh success success in their position well that's right and that's probably a good segue into my second point is that we're okay first step okay i've understand i've understood what the sport is what well, the rules all that sort of thing now we're going to understand a little bit we're going to zoom in a little bit more onto the athlete that we may be working with so um, we're going to look now at the position that that athlete plays in that sport. Now, obviously, if it is an individualized sport, well, we already know that, well, it might be just be the specific event. So if it's athletics, they do sprinting. Is it 100 meter? Is it 400 meter? Is it, you know, um, long distance events, all that sort of thing. So we just zoom in a bit, little bit and now look at, okay, what specific position um, or event do they actually need to work on? So if I think of now... Um, I might even use basketball as an example um, now. So what position do they play? Okay, so if we've got an athlete comes in and they say that they're a centre, right? So they're one of the taller athletes in the in the game and typically their, you know, their main role is, is that defence side of things. Yeah, they need to block shots. They need to be able to, um, you know, I guess jump pretty high, but also have the strength and the, and the, and the speed and quickness 
in order to defend, but also have the ability to score. You know, post up, you know, makes a few moves and, and, and get close to the rim, right? They're close, typically, are players that are close to the basketball court, uh, basketball ring, sorry. And um, that's just sort of, okay, that's a bit of an idea of what that is. Now, if you don't know what a centre is, well, then our coaches would then go in, whether it is asking the athlete in front of you, okay, what does that require? Or we do our own research, right? It, there's so much content out there. We can watch any game. We can watch NBA. We can watch NBL. We can, you know, YouTube. So we will do what it takes in order to learn that position, understand exactly uh, the things that make that, um, you know, that position, um, you know, successful. Yeah. You know, and then we, we do need to dive into the sort of the physical demands. Like, do they need strength? Do they need power? Do they need speed? Do they need endurance? Do they need some muscle size, right? So depending on the position, you know, maybe a center uh, would need to have a bit more strength, a bit more, I guess, muscle size to sort of, you know, take some of the hits, take some of the, you know, take on some of the bigger players that they might be playing against. Whereas a guard, for example, who's mainly got the ball, that brings up the ball, you know, makes the plays, passes the ball, uh, needs to be fast, needs to be agile, needs to be really speedy, right, and quick. Um, you know, they they might not need as much that muscle size. You know, they might not need to be as strong, but they need to be very powerful. So um, there's a few things there that we need to understand. Okay, well, basketball, we know, bounce the basketball. You know, you're trying to get as many uh, shots, uh, sorry, how many, as many score many points on the scoreboard right in order to finish and and to to win the game so but every position on your player or sorry the the player in your team we all have different roles right so it's the same in footy same in soccer same in you know all our team-based sports and of course in the individualized side of things you know again a lot of that is down that performance side of things you know how fast can you be or how strong you can be if we're thinking about power lifting for example or how much weight can you lift? Um, and that's probably what's going to, you know, make you uh, or help you win the game or the event or whatever it is. Um, and then another thing that we've got to think about as well is what is the, where is the athlete in sort of their training phase or in their season, right? Are they pre-season? Are they in-season? Are they in an off-season period? That's really important for us coaches to know because in-season, you don't want to be putting too much, I guess, load or too much. Um, they don't want to be training too hard or too much intensity or too much volume. Otherwise, that might really have a detriment effect on their performance in the weekend. So we've got to be smart with that in season. Okay, we know that they need to be ready for whatever it is, Saturday game, Sunday game, or an event that's coming up in four weeks, whatever it is. So we've got to be smart in how we allocate programs, um, what days they train, how they train, what type of exercises are going to be specific for them. So, um, and then of course in the preseason, off season, well we've got a bit more time. There's no, there's no pressure in order to perform, but it's a great time to get a lot of volume, a lot of intensity, uh, and build a real good base uh, in order to get to the the point uh, where when they get the, in that in season phase and competition phase, um, that they're pretty you know pretty ready to go. So. There's a few things there. Um, and yeah, and then what are sort of the repetitive movements? So, for example, uh, you know, a, a, a ruck, you know, in AFL, right, they're always in that middle section. They're, you know, always going up for that jump, yeah, to try and win that, you know, the ruck and, you know, hit it to their players, all those sort of things. There's a lot of jumping in there. There's probably a lot of, yeah, he needs to be strong. He needs to be sort of pushing, bumping, tackling those around him in order to, you know, be that solid person that helps the 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 team have that um, possession or keep the possession. Um, but then you might have the forwards that need to be again similar things. Obviously, the footy's got some similar qualities, but they need to be fast. They need to be explosive. They need to be able to, um, you know, get the ball, get into the right position, whether it's in fifty or you know all that sort of thing, uh, to get closer to that to those goalposts. To be honest kick a goal right yeah and i guess if we think about the repetitive movements sometimes when we overdo these movements where most injuries will occur correct and and that's another thing and that will be in one of the other steps that we're going to cover in a moment but 
we need to know what are they always doing. We know basketball, the shooting guards are going to be doing mostly the shooting, right? And they might be shooting from the three-point line. That's a longer distance than maybe a center might be only one, two, three meters away from the rim. So the pressure, the stresses the um, that are placed on the body is going to be dependent on the position, right? So we need to know those differences. Um, but yeah, I think the... I think that's uh, that covers that second step. So we've gone through the first step, which is understand the sport. The second step is understand the position of the athlete or, or the specific event that they're working on. And the third one is now, I guess, zooming in even more into the athlete that we're actually working with. So we know your sport, we know your position, but what are your, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are some areas that you can improve in order to be that better? So we've done a bit of research on the position. What maybe is, um, you know, uh, going to make, make you a better athlete? You know, whether it is, you know, you need to be faster, you need to be more agile, you need to have better reaction times, those sort of things. So, okay, we do, we may need to uh, first ask the athlete, okay, what do you think in your game is something that you need to improve on? And that's typically what we would cover within our consults. Like, what are your goals, really? And that's what it comes down to. I think most people um, and that play sport and the kids that, that come here, they're very, they want to be better. Yeah, they want to they want to enjoy the game, but they also want to, you know, be better. They want to compete. They're very competitive. I know that when I was growing up, I always wanted to be better than the other opponent that I was, that I was playing against, right? So I think um, understanding from their perspective, okay, what do you think your strengths are? What are your weaknesses and what do you think that we need to improve? And then we might then be able to confirm those by doing some sort of testing, right? So we've got a, a few different tests that we do here. It might be speed, it might be strength tests. Um, we've even got sort of endurance tests um, for your cardiovascular system. How, you know, essentially how fit are you? How strong are you? How fast are you? How agile are you? And once we, um, and then we will have, a, I guess, a, what we call normative data. So we would compare those results either to, well, typically to your age range and your level. Now, we, we, we're luckily that uh, we have access to a lot of scientific journal and articles and, and, and scientific textbooks and, and a lot of data that comes out every year um, on particular sports. Obviously, AFL living in Australia, those statistics are updated yearly, especially with the AFL combine that comes up, right? So we may have, um, uh, you know, an athlete that needs to be fast. So if their 20 meter sprint at the age that they are at is not at the standard or the um, that it should be, then we know that that's an area that we can improve, right? Um, same with you know vertical jump. Same with all of that. And and majority of the main sports in Australia, sort of your soccer, your netball, your tennis, we can have access to some of those numbers. Um, swimming, of course, you know, they're tracking time all the time, you know, sprinting, tracking all, you know, uh, the time. Um, you know, if you're thinking about like, you know, your, your power, a lift, uh, athletics movement, so it might be shot put, discus. Again, it's all distance-based. So a lot of that is going to be um, recorded, right? So we can do a little bit of research. We can do a bit of digging. I mean, the athlete might even, might even know themselves because a lot of the coaches would be like, hey, you're not fast enough or you're not strong enough or whatever it is. Here's what we know from the athletes we work with. So um, really interesting that, that we need to you know, understand from their perspective what they think, but then now let's test it on ourselves and just um, or ourselves in our own facility and just double check those things. Um, yeah, did you have anything else to add to that? Um, I think, yeah, it's really important to understand where the athlete is at in terms of their current abilities, but also understand, understand where their strengths are at the moment. If they're a very uh, lanky and long uh, player, but they're incredibly fast and have a really good engine on them, we don't want to lose that. Mm. Rather, we want to maximize it and also build up other things around that. So mm. it's important to make sure that we identify their strengths, but also their weaknesses, but we also don't lose that strength. Mm. No, I like that. It's a really good point. Um, and yeah, like I think we, this is a good, good place to start. We, we, it's, it's good having some numbers to see where you're at. I think, you know, we can always think, oh yeah, I need to be quicker. I need to be stronger, but it might not even be those things. It might actually just come down to your skills. So it's good that we've got test results or testing because sometimes the athlete might be like, oh, I'm actually crap at this or I'm not that good at it. 
And we might go, actually, that is one of your strengths. And they didn't realize it. It might even just be that, that the games that they've played, maybe the the circumstances, maybe it might be mental challenges. So that's where something we can start talking to the athletes, the parents, the coaches to go, hey, actually, you're actually really good at this side. Maybe there's something um, psychologically you're, you're you're being challenged with on the field it might be pressure it might be this might be that so um i think it's really good for us to be able to actually show the athlete that you know their strengths and but areas to improve as well um and that brings us to the last step which is um understand the injuries and you got you you mentioned that before that when we figure out what are the repetitive movements typically um there might be some times especially if you play sport from let's say you're playing the same sport since you're you know seven eight nine years old and then you're now 15 16 17 18 like there's a lot of years you know in between doing the same movement same you know thing that's where like injuries for example if you're playing tennis right serving forehand it's all on the one hand right so then when you see these these common injuries which is why they call like the tennis elbow you know, you've got golfers that have the golfer's elbows. Jumper's knee. Jumper's knee. You know, there's so many um, names that come from it because it's a repetitive movement. It's quite common in their sport. Um, so it's really important, like, um, just understanding that what are the common injuries? Um, and it might even be that the, the the athlete that's right in front of you that you con- you know, you're having conversation with um, before we, you know, we're getting to know them and stuff they might already have some of these injuries that, that they have. So we do need to understand, do they have injuries? Have they had many injuries in the past? You know, we know in basketball a lot, you know, ankle ankle rolls and sprains and things like that happen. So we need to be aware of it, um, but we also need to understand that, well, we want to help the, the athlete, the parent understand that we actually can help uh with a lot of the prevention side of things. And that's what we take into account. Okay, rolling ankles is something that you're, that's maybe common for you. All right, now let's formulate a program that would actually help minimize or reduce your risk of that happening, you know? Um, and, and you know, we, we're, not, um, we're not sort of saying that we're physios, osteos and things like that. We, we will collaborate with allied health professionals in order to go, all right, they're dealing with this, all right, and then we will do what we need to do in order to, communicate with the the allied health professional do what they need to do and then when they come to us we then will try and formulate something the best that we can or the athlete might be in the best might not even be injured yet so we want to try and do some things that would help them obviously hopefully um, reduce and, and and prevent them actually getting injured um you know and you know even netball for example um, a lot of knees go out. You know, those who are netballers that are listening, I'm sure they've had some knee pain. I'm sure you've known someone in your uh, in your team that's, you know, maybe ruptured ACL, right? It's it's something that needs to be addressed early um, or something that we can, you know, try and reduce and, and prevent. So that's another thing that, that I typically would um, look into. All right, Nathan, that was awesome. Thanks so much for... Uh giving us such a comprehensive understanding of like where to start with uh, athletes needs analysis. So uh, just to sort of recap, what were the four steps again? Yep, so we go to figure out or understand the sport, number one. Number two, we got to understand the position of the athlete. Uh, number three, we got to actually dive into the, the specifics of the strengths, weaknesses, areas to improve for that specific athlete that we're working with. And then the last step is to uh, understand the injury history injuries they currently have and maybe what are some common injuries for that um, athlete or even the sport that they play yeah and then basically with all those four things we can really start to create a really comprehensive evidence-based correct physical physical preparation program designed to improve and to really uh, make your athlete or youth youth athlete really resilient and prepare for the demands of their sport so for any parent coach or youth athlete out there that might be thinking about investing in a strength conditioning program what sort of what sort of some things they should look out for when it comes to that yeah i think um just making sure that the coach is taking that time to get to know you uh get to know your sport getting to know um, your strengths your weaknesses they're doing a bit of testing so um, really make sure that yeah you want them to 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 really invest into that that um, that time into getting to know you and the sport and if they're doing that then you'd hope that 
you know, that that program is going to be going to be a little bit better um, than maybe a program that if, let's say, you came to them and they didn't really sort of listen to you, really, un- you know, get to understand your sport and all of that, you might just be getting a program that's just sort of a random program that, yeah, that they might give to everyone. Um, so, yeah, just be, be mindful around that side of things. Yeah, no, we don't want a just a generic, boring program. We want a program that's actually going to work and get your results. Correct. Yeah. No. All right, well, um, thanks for listening to the episode, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Instagram and Facebook for uh, the up-and-coming events and content you might get from us around youth athlete development. Um, and, yep, see you on the next episode. Thanks, guys. You have just listened to the Inner Athlete Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with the release of weekly episodes. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to get great tips on all things youth athlete development and youth mentoring.